All right, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So any one of us can please lead in prayer. Yes, anybody can be. Let's go ahead, Asha. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the sunshine. And thank you, Lord, as we come to learn about discipleship and small groups and all the groups, God, that as we learn that we may understand the nature of the our level of what it means to disciples and for us to know God. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Paul, Lord. Thank you for everything that he's got to teach, Lord, that we may hide them and understand what we may ponder and meditate in each word. And that you are about to fill in with your spirit as you pour out, God. Thank you, Lord, for my all my classmates that they will understand and grow deeper in your word and truth, God. In name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Asha. All right, so let's continue from where we stopped. Sorry, I think my voice may be a little low because I'm just recovering from a throat pain. Uh, so if I'm too low, please let me know, and uh, I'll try my best to get get a little louder. Is it okay? Is it audible for everyone? It is faster. It is audible. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just uh, present the notes. All right. Everyone can see this the notes. Okay. All right. So last week we talked about many aspects of what a a like a cell group is and a care cell. We looked at examples of that as well. Uh, we looked at uh, you know some of the examples of cell churches. Uh, Yoido uh, Full Gospel Church, which is David Paul Yogicho's church, and how. When he began these cell groups, the church began to just, uh, you know, enlarge in numbers. Then we looked at what a cell church looks like. Uh, so, uh, we looked at the importance of, of why cells. We looked at nine points, provides the most efficient means for pastoring, recapturing families, increasing the church, making disciples, having time, true fellowship and edification, exercising of spiritual gifts, raising up leaders, accountability, and avoid continuation of dead programs. So, so basically what we also looked at was, you know, a care cell and a cell group. We, we came to this conclusion that a, a cell group is a different, you know, uh, groups meeting in different locations and they are part of the main church, right? But a cell church is where everything happens within the cell group itself. So whether it is evangelism, whether it is women's ministry, men's ministry, whatever events, programs, it's all done by the cell church itself, right? Now, if you look at, for example, our church, All People's Church, we are not a cell church. We are a church, but we have a lot of cell groups, which we call life groups, right? And so we, the life groups are an integral part of the church, but most of what happens is, is through the church, right? It's, it's not through the life groups. It is through the church. And then again, the life group leaders, life groups have their own freedom to, you know, reach out to people and do their own kind of, you know, uh, outreaches and events and programs that they'd like to. But basically, if you look at it, uh, we are a church with cell groups. But then there are churches which are care cell churches and they function out from there, right? So let's go down. Let's continue from where we stopped, we're looking at the APC 12 model. Now, uh, remember, we also briefly spoke about the G12 model. And uh, the G12 simply was that each cell group will have 12 people under them. Each cell group will have 12 people. And we looked at the reasons as well, because it, you know, there's true fellowship. 
there's 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 this one on one mentoring discipleship that's happening and the leader is pastoring over these 12 so basically he he he's looking at these 12 itself right and trying to build them up into Christ likeness into maturity right now at APC we follow the G12 model uh, in our church and hence we are calling it the APC 12 model <clears throat> Right, so look at this. Uh, this diagram shows it very nicely. Right, uh, so this is the church, right? And you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve life groups, which we call it in Bangalore. We, in our church, we call it life groups. You can call it cell groups or so. So you got twelve groups here, and out of these twelve groups we see that many groups have are started, right? Uh, so this is the initial 12 groups. And then you got once, for example, a group becomes 15, we know, okay. So what we try to do is always, you know, raise up a new leader. And then you have that leader again, begins to, you know, uh, grow the team, grow the, uh, the life group. And then once they reach 12, it just, again, just keeps expanding that way, right? uh so many times in, in when you look at in apc right we have certain areas where there are too many people like for example uh you know in a certain area we may have 40 people coming from church we want to ensure that everyone are uh, you know part of a life group or they have accessibility to a life group so what we do is we we try to start two or three life groups in that same area they may be just you know, uh, half a kilometer away or just one kilometer away. Uh, now, <clears throat> the reason we allow it is because there are, you know, 40, 50 people living in that area. But again, if there'll be other uh, locations in the city where very few, there are pockets of people who come to church. So we try to, you know, start a, a life group and get people connected there. Right now, let's look at how the APC 12 cell groups or the AP we I'm so used to calling it life groups because that's what it is called in APC so if I if I say life groups in between it basically means cell groups right so the APC 12 cell groups and APC 12 model how does it flow uh, in our church right so it's one life group leader, cell group leader is responsible for discipling 12 people <clears throat> right so one leader 12 people now uh, when we start a life group initially we may not have all 12 people coming in you know we may have just probably three four people joining uh, but as a life group leader one of the things that we do is we don't look at numbers right numbers are nice right? it's good to have you know a big church it's good to have a lot of numbers uh, you know 12 people and then becoming 20 and becoming you know uh, many more life groups starting all that is good but one of the important things that we teach our life group leaders is to whether they are three people five people or ten people the most important thing a life group leader must do is to disciple them right uh, it, it is to raise up the next leadership right is to train people to grow in the ways of the lord right so for example uh you know you have two families coming to a life group so this life group leader must immediately come to this place where okay i have the opportunity to disciple and mentor these two sorry <coughs> right. uh, so I have the uh, you know responsibility to disciple and mentor these two people right so what's important is that we disciple people right whether they are young people young couples youth maybe a husband and wife older husband and wife count them all meaning 
you never know how God can use them, right? Then we look at the 12 cell members are committed to one another uh, in a cell group, right? Or are committed to one cell group leader. So for example, there are there's a life group and there are people in that life group. Those 12 people are committed to this leader in a sense that, uh, you know, being available, you know, being available for during the life group meetings, probably there's, you know, small tasks, volunteer tasks. And also, when they feel that they need prayer, they should be able to go to the life group leader. And, you know, instead of going to, you know, we may have a lot of friends and all of that. That's all right. But it's good that if you if we are part of a life group to go to the life group or the cell group leader and share your thoughts share your you know your whatever you're going through now i'm not saying this happens immediately but over time uh we must put our faith in our leaders right uh we cannot say i don't know them so uh i will only share with somebody that i know over time as you get to know the leader as you get to know the person who you know the cell group leader uh, be committed to that one leader right next one we see is the cell group leader works with each of his 12 at a personal level right here's the most uh you know beneficial part of a cell group the life group leader can work at a personal level <clears throat> so for example uh, you know there may be a youth life group there are 10 young men who are who are coming to a life group now for example i'm the leader of that life group now i i must have the ability to speak into their lives and also to receive or to hear what they are going through right now one person may say no he may come up and say hey i don't like studies the other person may say i'm feeling very you know, uh, tired of life, right? So another person may say, my career, nothing's happening. Another person may have another problem, right? All of them may have their problems, or some of them will have no problem at all. Uh, uh, but they just, you know, for no reason, they feel fear or doubt, right? So as a life group leader, we must work with them at a personal level. Right. So when I know this person is, you know, going through a challenge in their probably in their studies, uh, it is my responsibility to, you know, uh, just be available, just be there to, you know, uh, support and strengthen that youth. Right. Now the senior pastor, the pastoral team may not know. Right. This young man may have told the senior pastor and the, you know, the pastoral team. But remember, the pastoral team may not be available and may not remember everything, right? But as a cell group leader, uh, you know, these 12 are under your care. So you have the opportunity to speak into their lives, right? So you can say, hey, uh, you know, John, I know that you're going through this problem. Uh, I'm praying. We are praying as a group. Don't worry. Oh, uh, uh, we we will you know, pray for you. We're standing with you in prayer. I'm sure the Lord will come through to you. Now, what's happening? Every week, this person has somebody to talk to, somebody who can speak into his life, and it's such a blessing because you know that person may not feel lonely anymore. He knows that there are people around who are praying. Right. So, at a personal level, why to build them up? And to bring them to a place of spiritual maturity, right? And and I think this is the most beautiful part of a cell group, right? Uh, is that personal touch, right? Uh, uh, you know, over the last week, I met a couple of, of our church folks, and they were they were all we were all just casually talking. At, at we had a conference last week, and some of them said, "You know what? I will never forget." the times when I was in that life group, 
and some of them mentioned you know they said in 2014 when you know we had a life group this life group leader said this and it's come uh, you know last year uh, the lord did it for me right there was no pastor involved there was no prophet no prophet involved or no great preacher nothing but i'm so happy to know that you know uh, this person maybe in their late 30s now remembers what happened almost 10 years back in the life group and the pro prophetic word that came at that season and then, and then she said it took almost 10 years for it to fulfill but god has fulfilled it right uh, so so cell groups are a wonderful place where you know it's a, it's a place where you can really build up people right so the goal of the APC 12 model is making disciples, right? The cell group meeting is just a way to facilitate it, uh, but outside of the cell group, a, a, a leader must be willing to step out, right? Uh, so here's the thing, if, if you are a cell group leader, a small group leader, a pastor, uh, pastoring cell groups, you must be willing to step out meaning it's not just okay i finished my cell group today's wednesday or today's saturday i finished my cell group okay uh, i can take rest now uh, don't have to worry about it for the next two, two weeks no uh, it should be something from within where we say okay now that i know i have a, a week gap so somehow i must be willing to uh, you know minister to them during the week maybe a call, maybe a text message, uh, maybe just a few moments of prayer with them will really help, right? So eventually every person uh, will belong to uh, cell groups, one cell group where he is being ministered to by his cell group leader and one cell group where he ministers to others as a cell group leader. Now, <clears throat> go down right if if cell groups meet alternate weeks this will amount to one cell group meeting each week so if a cell group leader is able to once all the members of his initial 12 have started their own cell group he can start another cell group of another 12 while continuing to minister to the original 12 so if you didn't so this is really interesting so what we can what we do at APC is uh, and we recently did this in uh, January 2023, where we, you know, we we had a, a youth girls life group. Now that youth girls life group was meeting for approximately two, a little more than two years. Right, they started off just before the pandemic, uh, uh, early 2020, and. What happened is uh, because it was a youth girls life group, many girls started joining, right? And uh, they really had a wonderful time. Uh, everyone were growing in the Lord, uh, even though it was COVID, they would meet online. And um, so I remember talking to the cell group leader and she was saying, you know what? Uh, I've been with these girls for two years and they are very strong now. And she said, it's time for them to step out and do something on their own. So she she so she so mentioned to me, she said, out of this 12, the, I, th I think there were about 10 people in the group. Out of the 10 people, she gave me five names, right? And she said, these are five girls who are potential leaders uh, for uh, becoming life group leaders. So, uh, so what we did was we began to call them and we had a conference call, Zoom call, began to talk to them and we knew that they were ready to start their own life group. So out of these 10, five of them started their own life groups and that started in January 2023, right? And, and this original life group leader is continuing to minister to you know the, the the five who are remaining in the group uh, but the other five have become like cell group leaders right and they are in turn are discipling new girls who are coming into the cell group and i was so excited because you see how 
when we train up youth the right way and we know that they are leaders we can just release them so that they fulfill God's call on their life and now these five who have not yet started eventually will also start their life groups so you see that ripple effect you start a life group raise up leaders release them to start their own life groups then they raise up other leaders so it's it's, it's just a constant cycle that happens right now our objective in becoming a cell church is not to have cell groups or cell meetings our objective in in becoming this church is to make disciples where everyone is ministered to and everyone becomes a minister right and that's our focus at APC everyone is ministered to and everyone becomes a minister and look at the difference between the APC 12 cells model and the care cell right? the APC 12 model number one criteria is disciple making right that's the number one criteria just mark it there yeah disciple making number one criteria that we have at APC and what we also do is we encourage cell group leaders to be part of our weekend school trainings uh, now we're also encouraging our life group leaders to uh, you know to uh, attend probably a couple of classes at Bible college a couple of courses they can take uh, either online or through e-learning because many of them are working but we are pushing them saying okay come on you you if you want to make disciples we have to you know prepare ourselves we need to be equipped enough to make good disciples so that's something that we always focus on and if you see the goal for care cells it's more of evangelism and fellowship now I want to make sure uh, uh, that uh, I, I make this point now fellowship right is also very important in uh, APC 12 model right uh, we also take uh, utmost importance in providing fellowship for our church members right uh, discipleship uh, disciple making is the main goal but there's also fellowship there is uh, uh, community building all of that is there right so it's not like APC is like only disciple making you go to the church you know you'll become a disciple or you go to the cell group you know become a disciple no it's not like that uh, we have certain goals like certain you know the reason we have the cell group the main reason is disciple making but we do have other things as well right now look at this cell leaders responsibility is to disciple cell members develop them as leaders and equip them to become disciple makers look at here cell leaders responsibility is to conduct the cell meetings right so there's no there's no uh, place for you know uh, okay can I raise up other leaders can, you know because in the mindset of a castle church or a castle is that this is I'm the leader and I have to make sure that the event uh, sorry the castle meeting is conducted well right so they're not it's not about thinking ahead it's just about you know okay I need to care for these people but make sure that the cell group happens well look at APC 12 each person is committed to one cell leader but here in a cell group people can visit any cell right so for example uh, you know a, a family can decide suddenly okay I want to go to that cell church right if they want to go they can go right uh, but in APC we we have made certain differences right now if you're a youth girl if you're a, a youth girl you cannot say i want to go to a youth boys life group and so there are certain restrictions right you cannot say a youth girl very rarely goes to a family life group or families can't say can i go for a youth life group but a young couples group cannot say can i go to a uh you know uh uh, uh maybe uh uh we have also some 
some of the older folks starting starting life group so senior citizens group so so there are certain you know criteria that we have made but in a care cell there's no criteria a boy can go to uh, a, a family group uh, a family can go to a youth group uh, uh, basically a cell church a care cell in uh, will not have those distinctions but we have made it uh, and the reason we've made it is because we can it's an effective way of disciple making right and we are also making sure that uh, you know things are done the right way right and the apc 12 model every person will become a leader of a cell and disciple at least 12 others now in the care cell a person can attend a care cell and never become a leader now this is uh, this is a bit sad to read itself right uh, a person can attend a care cell and never become a leader so he or she can attend can have great knowledge could have you know grown so much in maturity in christ likeness grown in the word grown in the spirit flowing in the gifts of the spirit may have been attending a care cell for 10 years but can never become a leader right because there's that person who is in charge of the care cell and only they will be in charge right so so that's the differences now we're not saying that apc 12 model is the best model and care cells are not uh, you know they they are not good at all no uh, you know we we saw that through care cells how the churches grew and people are also being evangelized in this fellowship all of that is there right but it's just that the main goals for the apc 12 and the care cell are different right so do you have any questions feel free to stop me right let's let's go down why the model of the 12 right now god's number for fruitfulness and multiplication is 12 so you got you see here the 12 tribes right 12 tribes genesis chapter 35 verse 22 to 26 uh now it's not that you know it has to be 12 12 is the greatest number or sometimes some it's seven or sometimes it's 12 no it's not that it's not that we we because uh, there are 12 tribes that's why we have the apc 12 model it's just basically that you know it's it makes sense right 12 this makes sense right 12 of them under one leader uh, and another reason for 12 here it says that the way god multiplies his people uh, in genesis 49:28 uh you know we see that god multiplies his people and and so so that's why we have the 12 model right now if you ask me uh why can't it be 13 it can be 13 also it's not like 13 is a bad number no it can be 13 if you if you plan to have 13 you plan to have 11 you can do it right it's not that 12 is the set number it's not like a magical number where everyone will come and get discipled and go no can have 12 you can make it even 15 right and and nowadays what what we do have is two uh, uh life group leaders right so for example you have uh two young men and uh, they co-lead the group we have that in apc as well so they co-lead so one one week this uh, this person uh ministers the other week the other person ministers and they co-lead the group right and uh, and so there, there will be co-leaders as well uh so you can think of having 15 people in the group because now each leader can take up seven or eight people each and minister to them uh in a on a personal level right then another reason for 12 is god's government the way he governs his people uh yeah, so those are some of the reasons why we have the APC 12 model, right? Any questions? Any questions before I go ahead? Any thoughts? Right, there's, uh, I, I just thought I'll ask this. Does anyone here, uh, you know, you, you have been a life group leader or a cell group leader previously. Uh, do you want to share anything that, 
uh, you know you went through this thought will make it a little bit interactive uh, anything that you went through maybe uh, it worked maybe it didn't work uh, and any thoughts that you have uh, or you've also been part of a life group what are the things that you noticed that were you know that were good and things that weren't good uh, if you'd like to share we can you know just spend some time just uh, you know just uh, opening it up for a little bit of discussion as well right anyone would like to share maybe you it could be uh, back in your home churches mangi or prabhakar you would like to share anything prabhakar i know you got your own ministry Rupa, yeah, go ahead, Rupa. Okay, I think uh, Rupa's network keeps going. Yeah, Rupa, you can go ahead, please. Sir, uh, sorry, I got no disconnected. Problem. No problem. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, here in uh, Anantapur, uh, we have a not a part of a church, but uh, one lady. She was called by God and she left her uh, government services and she started cell groups in various areas in this place. It's like uh, uh, going to one area where there is a believer and inviting the people around so that uh, they will be have, we have a chance to share the gospel with them and slowly disciple them when they come to the Lord. In that way, there are so many people, more than in thousands in the last few years, who have come to know the Lord. And I was also following that pattern in different uh, places, in villages, uh, nearby villages, where there are not uh, no churches, but only few believers. We used to go there every week, once in a week, each village, so that we could share and uh, disciple there. Now, during the COVID, sir, uh, I st we started uh, a small uh, Zoom meeting in the evenings, morning and evening. We started it for a prayer, for praying for the people. But slowly, it uh, uh, led to people joining from various places in Andhra and different places. So that we have started, uh, after the COVID, we start, I, God gave me this um thought that why don't I start discipling them because they are very keen and interested to know, to know the word. So this is going on every Monday to Thursday. We have evening 6.30 to 8 o'clock. They come from different places and we are, uh, uh, whatever I'm learning in the Bible college, we are doing it book by book, all uh, one after the other. And uh, we are really... Uh, learning and they share that they are able to minister and cater to the local churches where they are attending and to the groups where they are going there. So that's how God led me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rupa. So wonderful to hear how the Lord is using you to minister to you know, many people. It's wonderful. I, I was, as you were speaking, I was reminded of this book. Uh, I'll just type it down. Oh. Wonderful book uh, as leaders. Not sure if that if this book is still available, but it's called Christian Leadership by Oswald Chambers. It's a wonderful uh, book which talks about you know how as leaders we can be strong leaders especially you know when we are ministering to people we need the wisdom of god we need patience we need to understand in terms of making decisions how to make those decisions so it's a wonderful book if you if you can do uh, get a copy of this book as well okay elisha has uh, written a comment here i'm a cell leader in my local church our cells are not doing so well but I'm learning from the APC 12 model that we can regenerate ourselves by forming cells with members of common interests. 
like the girl cell group or age or the age cell group and also releasing cell members to start their cells from time to time is also an addition yes elisha yeah so this is uh, very important and again uh, elisha we also learned it the hard way uh, not the hard way but we over time we learned it meaning uh, because we used to just have cell groups right anybody could come anywhere anybody could join but over time we realized that hey if i'm 20 year old and i'm going and sitting in a life group with you know people who have 20 year old children uh you know the wavelength is completely different right so um of course that you know that fellowship may be there but there's no common interest right so over time we came up with this idea and the reason we have only boys and only girls is because uh we thought it wise because uh one it's it's good to keep it separate just to avoid any uh you know any uh confusions or problems later on but boys will be able to you know share their thoughts with the leaders uh, and girls again will have their own idea so yes elisha so one of the ways that you can what you can do is you can uh, if you are a cell group leader and if you have time in your hand what you can do is you can think of two days in a week right so you can probably look at okay one or, or two days in a week or however whatever works for you you can you can think of one Okay, I will do a youth boys group. So you have all the youth boys come. And then you can also think of doing a family group. I'm just giving you an example. So you can think of doing a family group. Uh, so both happen in different days. Right? Yeah, so, so you can choose how to do that. Okay, Kennedy asks a question. Do you have teaching programs of how to run and manage a cell group of the 12 model? Yeah, so what we do have is, Kennedy, we have a life group leaders training right now. One of the criteria to become a life group leader in our church is they must be a member of our church for at least a year. Right, so they should be a member. They, and so in a year, they will understand what is APC, what is the vision of the church and what do we want to achieve as life groups. And so uh, and sometimes, you know, we also take decision slowly there may be people who are one year or even two years in church but we see that they are not yet ready to start a life group what we tell them is you attend a life group right you you see how it is right and then over time uh maybe six months eight months we give them an opportunity to start so apart from this we do have teaching programs for example we have the weekend schools right so we make sure that and we encourage our life group leaders to attend then we also have uh, uh you know a uh, uh, monthly meeting with the life group leaders just to talk about uh you know life groups and uh, and just encourage them uh in terms of you know material uh sometimes we do understanding the prophetic uh gifts of the holy spirit uh you know leadership so we have our apc publications that we use to uh keep you know keep building them up on a regular basis so uh yes prabhakar you can go ahead thank you pastor um actually one of the insights uh, has been in ministry as uh, nowadays uh, most of the most of the places are like highly persecuted especially in Chhattisgarh, we are facing a lot of it. so uh i used to like we used to do uh, this like um, group cells and uh, and before COVID, there was different scenario. And during the COVID, it was completely changed because we could go and meet in person. So we started online services uh, during that time. It has been, you know, continuing by till day. And then uh, post COVID, uh, most of the people actually, uh, you know, to, due to the gap, most of the people left. So we started going and, you know, counseling them one by one and bringing them back to the congregation. And um, from last year, uh, I personally started uh, Monday uh, Bible devotion classes with you know uh, you know slides presentations and doing a uh, topic to topic you know so so that most of the people got back interested in studying the word of God we giving them assignments but one thing is that uh, that the age group is like as you said the wavelength is different because um, the people like uh, the age of my parents are also the part of this thing so we can't you know just uh, go and so we have certain 
things to deal with them uh, but uh, it is it is actually fruitful uh, as youths are connecting uh, through media and through technology we can you know get into them so in highly persecuted areas uh, we can't go in person meet and create life service groups so we are doing it online so that uh, the ministry should go on and weekly once a weekly we all you know gather together and worship the god so this is one of the insight pastor which we are doing thank you pastor. thank you thank you so much prabhakar for sharing yeah that's very true see god has given us wisdom as well uh, uh when we know that okay this this uh, look at what jesus did uh you know whenever he went to jerusalem they were willing to kill him so what did jesus do jesus didn't say okay i will be here only in jerusalem because i am the son of god no he went away he went to judea and judea they uh, accepted him they uh, you know they there was no threat on his life so he moved there so a uh, god is also calling us to walk in wisdom yes there's persecution and all of that and so it's wonderful prabhakar that you have started you know uh, uh, the, these uh, these meetings via online continue to build on them so there's there's no uh distance in the realm of the spirit right so you you can also since it's online you can also think of you know uh, as you're ministering here you can also think of hey why don't we start a teens uh you know why don't we start a uh, only boys only girls uh one of the things that you can do prabhakar is in the future you can you can think of leaders right uh you know, probably you can think okay this girl can uh you know we'll you know train her up let her connect with people maybe the first couple of meetings you also can join the zoom call and this just you know just hear what is happening right uh, uh and then you can give a feedback build her up so eventually she's also he or she is going to again become a leader and so that way just by online you're able to start cell groups right so that's wonderful thank you prabhakar for sharing thank you so much pastor and keep talking thank you Abraham says I have become more effective in ministry because of cell groups what I am doing in Vietnam now is based on what I learned in cell groups so thank you so much for sharing Abraham yes uh, Elisha says us have you had challenges with managing people's loyalty to life group leaders could you share any experience with us mm, yeah so there was no uh, uh thankfully uh there's no not many challenges uh but what i uh, this happened many many years back right so what happened was uh in our life groups we usually teach uh or we all usually discuss what happened on the sunday sermon sunday sermons right and all life group leaders at all location at all life groups uh we discuss what happened on sunday Right, so last Sunday we talked about purposes, uh, uh, you know, purposes and how we, God has called us for a purpose. So, whoever's having life group this week, maybe when this today or uh, up to this Saturday, we'll talk about what was discussed on Sunday. Uh, but what happened was uh, this person who was part of a life group came up to me and said uh, you know in life group we had this and uh, we had uh, you know discussed about uh, you know uh, this topic and we wrote down questions and these are some of the questions but uh, uh, you know he had basically had a question to ask right so i heard him out i helped him with the question but later uh, after the whole meeting uh, with this person i realized that this life group leader is not discussing what was discussed on sunday it was something random it was their own bible study so i called up the life group leader and i said uh, hey uh, thank you for what you're doing uh, but here's the thing in life groups uh, you know that a life group leader as a life group leader you know that we always discuss what, what happens on sunday uh and there's a reason for it so that all of us grow together in the lord so if you don't mind can you go back to that uh uh you know that process of just doing what was done on sundays he said okay yeah uh, i'll do that but later on a uh, couple of uh, weeks down the line again i found out that he is you know they're not discussing what is done on sundays uh so it became a little bit of a challenge but then 
uh, I asked him again, uh, would you like to do that? Or would you like to you know, prefer to share and discuss something of your own, what you have uh, you know, prepared? Um, so he said, uh, no, I'd, I, I would pref like, I prefer to you know, uh, just discuss about topics that I like, and I'm strong at teaching. So then I told him, OK, you can do that. But you'll it, you won't be part of it. It won't be an APC life group. It can be your own like Bible study or cell group, whatever you're doing. But it'll not be a life group. And he was fine with it, right? Uh, and even I was fine with it. But then later I realized, hey, but APC members are going to the life group. Uh, so what is his teaching? What is he teaching about? Right? Uh, he may teach something that he feels is right but it may not be biblically true so i had to go back to him and say listen can you you know also what you're talking about can you please share the document with me i would like to go through it and uh, so sometimes people he you know there will be people who get offended they say what well, you don't trust me or uh, you know i've been here for so many years all that is there so this is one challenge that I had to face. Eventually, we told him, you know, um, uh, you can invite people to your life group. But if you're having this group, you have to send the material to me. Otherwise, I will have to direct all the members to another life group. So it was hard to say this, but uh, but it, I'm happy I did it. Because the reason is, if I had continued with that, uh, I don't know what, you know, you know by heart, they're very good. Right, they are believers, true believers. Really love the Lord. Really like to serve. But then, what about their teaching? What if he teaches something wrong, and these ten or twelve people in the group believe that? Now, whose fault is it? It's going to be my fault because I didn't make sure that he is teaching the you know the right thing. So it was a hard decision. He said, "Okay, I I don't think I'll continue the group," uh, and I said, "Yeah." It's it's all right. So that was just that one uh, you know challenge that I've faced. But apart from that, I I don't I haven't really faced uh, any other major problem. Uh, yeah. So as leaders, it is important to make those you know uh, decisions. These are important decisions because twelve people. Imagine if he says you know if this leader uh, says something. You no, know, I don't believe in. The rapture, for example. Now, these 12 people under him will say the same thing. Now, whose fault is it? My fault. Because I haven't looked after the, as a life group coordinator, I haven't made sure that this life group leader is doing what must be done. Right? So that was one of the challenge uh, that I had faced. Right. I thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. It was a nice discussion. Let's take a break. We'll come back at uh, 10 o'clock, and we'll continue with session two. Christopher, is it OK we take the break, and we can come back and take up your question? Yeah, thank you so much, Christopher. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back um, for session two.